Pomidonash, a sesur kahar, the coral et moss. Bilin gachti kedin, a gore le ear grit. Beme kind le ear im rory kaja, agus beg kade crack again, agus kora, a kind her gachni bunter le kaid. I remember saying to him, this is some trip, Sean Murray. This is unbelievable shit. <laughs> <laughs> he says, it's not a trip, Muggsy, it's, it's a tour. And I was like, no, but you know what I mean? He says, no, I don't. Probably there again, DNG, or the or the again, DNG, uh, that's in Cabana. Yeah, to 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 the LNG and Larry and Galvin, and yeah, that's the that's the brand name, and yeah. Ton show it to Huiv on Sesur Shaw Egg Air Grid. Ta Air Grid Extura Angach Lechachus Naheran, Hi Tauhi Ishil Carbone. And we're back for another episode of Coral Etmos in association with Air Grid. Air Grid are the title sponsors. For the Air Grid Under 20 Football Championships entering their ninth year as sponsor. Tonight I'm delighted to be joined by Aidan Farker from Arma. Aidan, um, great to have you on for, for the show. How are you? How are you since since that, that was a tough defeat to take? Um, and I'm not going to go too deeply into it, Aidan. I know you're probably sick of going over and back and over, but the whole penalty thing. Is it just surreal? Like when you look back at it, as three matches and three matches our man have been involved in. Do you, do you kind of say like, Jesus Christ, what's going on? I suppose there's a bit of that. Um, yeah, it's a. I think as you get older, Tomas, you, 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 the defeats get a wee bit tougher. Um, listen, the penalty things they are what they are. There's people have plenty of opinions on them. To me, like. Um, the more you're in them, the more you think, God, you know, because it's such a lottery, it's probably a 50-50, you know, you're going, we're bound to get on the right side of it this time around. Um, and there was moments maybe that we thought we were going to. Um, but, um, yeah, it's obviously disappointing. Um, and uh, But, listen, someone has to be the loser. I suppose I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm 10 days past it now, so I'm a wee bit less sore than I was. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, it definitely, definitely stings third time round a lot more. And just, you know, got it for the group, you know, um, got it for for the management team and got it for, for what, what we put into it and our, the aspirations we sort of had for ourselves. Um, but listen, if you don't win it in normal time, you ha you're playing with fire. And unfortunately, um, we were on the wrong side of it, like you seem to have, and I'm only I, I've never asked. I'd know the lads, I'd know Kieran, and I'd know two Kierans, three Kierans, actually. Jesus, uh, you seem to be very tight. Is that something you've worked on the last few years? You know, no matter what, you block out what's going on on the outside, which you'd have to do, but as a group, you seem really, really tight. That there, there's a fierce bond between the management and the players. Yeah, well, I think um, we've worked very hard at that. A lot of us have been together for a long time. We sort of, um, and, and that continuity with Kieran being there obviously helps with, you know, that, you know, core group of players who've been there. There's always changes every year, I suppose, with, with new new boys coming in, but that core group really, really driving it and really driving that cohesiveness, I think. Um, you know, it's not always the best players that win all Ireland. It's... it's the most cohesive team and the best group and I don't, I don't just mean the best 15 I mean and, and we took real pride in making sure that the group was tight and everyone um, felt involved I suppose and you know obviously Star wasn't far away um, from his playing days so he knew how important that was and he brought, uh, brought a lot to that setup there but you know a lot of us well probably less of us now I suppose but um, I played with McKeever and, you know, I would have been a teammate of his as well. So um, he knew how important that cohesiveness was as well. But yeah, no, we are, we are a tight group. It's just about keeping it together. And, um, you know, we've been through a lot of heartache, a lot of defeats, a lot of low days as, as football brings you and sport brings you. But a lot of good days, I suppose, as well. Um, have we went to the pinnacle? No, we haven't. But um yeah, to answer your question, we are we are a tight group, and um, I'd say if any of us were in a pickle, we would have no bother ringing anybody to get it get it sorted out. Um, and that's a special thing. That's a special thing about sport, and that's something that I'm sure you have it with all your teams, Tomas. You know, 
and um, you just pick up where you left off if you haven't you know maybe met a few boys in a while like yeah i, I... I wouldn't, and I'd personally, I'd be shocking um, in terms of after defeat, In I wouldn't be able to, uh, I wouldn't be myself, I wouldn't like talking about the match, I wouldn't like, uh, I would certainly wouldn't watch it, and it would take you weeks and weeks and weeks to get over it, and then slowly and surely you're back with the club, they lift you, you have family at home, everything, you kind of, you're in a bubble for so long, that people aren't on the same wavelength and people don't take it as seriously and you see, Christ, there's more to life here. Would it take you long to snap out of it? Would it take you long to get over it? I know from an intra-county point of view, you have to wait till next year until you try to right the wrongs. But does it, do you, how would you take defeat? Are you slow or? Um, I don't, you know, I get, I was just, at, at the time it gets, you know, in the acute stages of a defeat, like it's it's sore, it gets sore as you get older. But at the same time, I got two wee boys at home, and we had a few drinks on Sunday. So I probably wasn't about the house Sunday. Like every one of us went to maybe Belfast for a few beers after the match, and that was all right. And I got up on Monday, and uh, the wee man got up, and he, you know, he gave me a hug and he says, oh, "I'm got it." He was got it. He's seven now, so he understands a bit more, but. The whole set up and he was ripping and whatever and uh he says um well at least you'll get to spend a wee bit more time at home was so that's the reality of it and you know he was right and that sort of snapped me back into um a wee bit of perspective i suppose and we have a couple of friends here who, who've who been going through a tough time with their wee kid um who, who took sick so you know defeats are tough and all that but um you know, belong getting getting a bit of perspective uh, at home with maybe illness or sickness or um what's important. But um does it mean that will you know that hurts any less at the time? It definitely doesn't because it takes up so much of your life. And um as I probably said to you when we were exchanging tax, I was saying how difficult it is because your your life is just a series of seven days getting ready for the weekend, and when that's taken away from you after six seven months there of just being in the county. It, it takes a wee bit of transitioning for sure, but um, back with the club there the night for the first time and feeling a wee bit better about myself, I suppose. But uh, um, yeah, no, it's tricky, but um, that's sport, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to, you've been around, what what year did you go into the Armagh setup in? Um, we I went in actually 2011, We it was actually November 2011, we had no fee cup game. And I got called in for a trial, but I, I don't. I remember thinking, I don't. I was playing soccer at the time, so I remember thinking, I don't even know if I want this or not. Do you know what I mean? And uh, but I vowed that I wouldn't. If I came calling, I wouldn't say no. And uh, I went, and we played me down in Navan, and it was a worst, worst night. It was brutal. And you, you know the change rooms in Navan, that the the, um, the holders are about seven and a half foot in the air and I'm going putting my stuff on it and I'm going what the fuck says these boys are <laughs> and uh, I go what am I getting myself in for I was only 18 and uh, um, never looked back from there I suppose actually made my debut in 2012 in the championship for Tyrone but we played against you Tomas in Tralee that was my first first league we played against you down in Tralee 2012 if you recall, I don't want to jog your memory, but I think you got a red card, did you? <laughs> I did. I think I am. Um, I, uh, I'm not you know, came up to me and, and it looked like he was doing nothing, but he, I think he was actually pinching me and he was cute. I wasn't. I just lashed out. Uh, that was the one thing I suppose all three of us, and we were card. We weren't shy of the cards. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, you is it something you've consciously done down the years? Like, because I was very bad. I remember having a conversation where I used to room with Paul Galvin and the two of us for a, a period, I don't know, for a period of about six or seven months, the two of us were in desperate trouble. And I found it very hard to control. To, when, when the head goes in the middle of a pitch and you just react, it's really, really hard to draw yourself. It's done before you even think. Have you worked on that? Yeah, I think uh, early in my career, like 20... Post 2012, right through to 15, I picked up a few reds. Actually, got two in a row in the league one time. And the second one, now, to be fair, was rescinded in my defence. I, 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 
I think my name went before me on that one. But um, yeah, actually, I had a conversation with my wife after that. My now wife, she was she was my girlfriend at that time, and uh, she sort of just said, "You need to remember who you're representing. Like you know, you know, maybe you remind me that I was a good person, and people aren't going to think you know play hard and all that. But you know, you need to really think hard about you know your not your image. I don't really care what other people think, but at the same time, um, and then I feel like." I was in around the time Kieran came in and he was sort of saying, you're no good to me on the line either. So, um, like, listen, I, I just like to be competitive. Thing, it's most... Isn't it the first thing when you, when you're actually, you walk off and you're, if you're sent off, right. And you sit down, you say, fuck it. I'm after leaving the boys. The boys are a man down outside now. And that was always the first thing you say, Christ almighty. Like, um, I, I'll tell you a good one. I was sent off once and uh, I was back home. The match was on in, in Killarney. Uh, league game and I was at home before the game was over and I live in Cork I was at home before the game was over um, which isn't a good sign at all I found it very hard but I always found then come championship time it was easier to focus in um, do you find Aidan right so you're in there since 2012 do you find and I see it inside in young dress rooms do you find that the younger lads coming in now there's something different, like the, the way they prepare for games, the way they get ready for games. If they're on phones before games, we might have said, Jesus, what are they doing? Are they tuned in at all? Do you think things are different from that point of view? How would how would you, do you take any notice of that? Or, or would you still have the rules where, where we're focusing in now? Like? Yeah, uh, no, there's definitely a, a different... Uh... Don't want to sound too old, like, but there's definitely a different generation coming through where they're much more. It would definitely say there's social media aware of like they probably see everything, everything that's going on around the game, the comments yeah. from you know when you're just trying to get into them that it's all noise, like it doesn't doesn't you know those people don't know what they're talking about a lot of the time and you, you can't fall prey to that because you know. Uh, like I would consider myself a wee bit more experienced. Like and I've fallen fall prey to that myself, and like it, some of that idle chat can can soften you and and um, you know take take your eye off the ball. But yeah, simple things like I would write down all my gym sessions and whatever. And a lot of us do, and everyone would. But there's a lot of the new boys are maybe writing on the phone, and I'm going, you shouldn't be texting during your gym session, keeping them going. And they're going, no, I'm just recording the session. Everything's recorded on the phone now. There's no. Um, no such thing as books and paper and stuff like that there but no listen I think people are people and um, if you get a few good lads who are really willing to push and, and drive the thing who've you know good quality you know they'll really buy into what we're trying to do and, and ask questions and uh, that's what we found you know with any of the younger guys coming in and um, great appetite and they're coming into a really good a really good setup I would argue so um. It's important to for them, and I always just say to them, just a wee word now and again, just just be sponge for it all. Like anyone, a simple question could really, really push push them boys to be a little bit better, and that's what you're chasing. Like just putting all them wee things together to be a wee bit better all the time, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm getting across to them. But um, no, they're they're quite they're they're, they're quite good. All boys have to say, the younger boys anyway. I was going to say like when uh, I don't know. When we were, well, when I, I did, 2013, I finished. And uh, I think the social side of it, Aidan, has changed a lot. I was going to ask you about Kieran Donny, and uh, not from a coaching point of view, but did you ever go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him inside in a bar late at night? And if so, <laughs> how did you get on? Because <laughs> I never went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. When the, the word bottomless and Kieran Donny seemed to go hand in hand. Yeah, Max, his, his whole energy is bottomless. I think it doesn't just fall with his drinking. But, uh, no, I'd be a lightweight when it comes to that, I'll tell you the truth. I never started drinking. I was 25, but now I take a few the odd time. But uh, funny, um, it was the end of last year, and around this time last year, a few of us went down to meet him, you know, at the end of the season after the Galway defeat. Um just to be honest with you, it was a bit of a loaded trip. And I think he knew that because we wanted to make sure he was on board for next year. So we packed up, booked a couple of nights and um, 
he says he's coming down yeah we're coming down and he got the barbecue on he's famous for these burgers that he always makes um don't know if you've sampled them but anyway the burger i must fucking get on to yeah no they're nice now i have to say and uh we were going down to just to get him to sign i suppose to um chat to the wife i suppose as well and make sure she's on board as well with her that's a massive commitment i have to say geez that trip is insane but it, um so we ended up going into town and uh we actually ran into we're, we're actually i'm not sure the name of the bar in Tralee, but we were um going good and who was who ended up beside us fitzmorris eamon was in with the wife talk uh, having a meal and of course star got him in and we ended up locking the doors there at about four or five in the morning and it was good to see actually uh geezer let us her down that night as well so crack was good and uh talk about uh star drinking i've never seen fitzmorris drink as many i've never seen a man drink as many magnets in my life <laughs> Yeah, I never seen a man, this man consume as much sugar uh, in my life. <laughs> I know. I tell you what, there'll be no Funny story. Just as solid as the first one as the last one. You... Pardon? I uh, I roomed with Fitzmaurice as well, and Jesus, I roomed with the, the worst of them all, Dara Fitzmaurice. And do they still do that? Do you still have your own roommates that you stick with, or do you change it around? Uh, no, it's sort of changed in recent years. There's been a lot of change of personnel, so it's been changed slightly. Um, it used to be me, me and Super used to be together all the time, but we've been, I don't know why, but we've been uh, separated and a few other boys. I think if you get the word in early to um, Potty, he, he's our liaison guy. If you get the word in early, who you want to go with, you know, we try to keep the snores together. There's a few prime snores in, uh, in the team, like, so I'll not name any names, but we try to keep them boys together. But Paddy Burns is a good man for the earplugs. He he brings all he's prepped. Uh, yeah. It's I was going to say you mentioned the club before, and anybody mentions our man straight away, they'll mention Cross. But ye have ye in particular have a fierce rivalry with Cross, and you've you've rattled them a couple of times in recent years. What is the like? It's a me. It's a huge rivalry up there. Is it to a state where counties finished now straight back in with the club? And lift it for the club because was it tw- what was last? Did you win it two, three years ago, twenty twenty? Was it? Yeah, we won. We won first one ever in sixteen, um, beating the final in seventeen, which probably is the most memorable one that, as you probably can imagine. And uh, uh, were there thereabouts from from fourteen right through to twenty? Won it again in twenty. That was a good one. Um, we. Because there was a lot of chat about Cross, you know, when we missed out, we missed out. We 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 stayed away from them in the sixteen one, and there was a lot of chat maybe about. Well, maybe there wasn't a lot of chat, but that's how we framed it. There was a lot of chat. You didn't meet Cross in sixteen, you know. So, um, we ended up we actually beat them in the semi final of seventeen, and got beaten the final then against from the heart. Um, we were seven up at half time and imploded, I suppose. But um, then won it in twenty, be crossing the final. Um, just had a really good day that day, and probably Cross had a poor day, but we had a good win, you know, and uh, we were really well prepped. Fin- Finian Moriarty was the manager of our club team there for a couple of years. Um, you would have played against him, Tomas, as well, but he was first class and just what our boys needed, you know. There's there's an amount, whatever it is, and I'd have a fierce interest in coaching, Aidan, there's an amount, I would say, up especially in the north, in terms of schools, in terms of clubs, especially coaches, that there's a fierce emphasis on very good coaching up there. Do you find that? Do you find club level, like the standard of coaching would be excellent, that there's an amount of... I was, I was talking um, last week to a guy and he was just t- explaining to me, like, down and Kerry, yeah, you'd have fierce football men, you'd have but the lack of maybe proper coaches within the club system or even the school system is thin on the ground compared to other counties. Up in the north, there seems to be a fierce emphasis on the basic coaching. Would is that a fair comment? No. Yeah, no. There's like there's a lot. There's a lot. I think if you have a lot of aspiring coaches who are looking big club jobs or or county jobs, you know, it, it really drives the standards of and even 
even players now at the top clubs, I suppose, in Tyrone. Like we're, I'm close to Tyrone, so I'd go and watch a lot of the Tyrone Championship games and stuff, and the, the quality of co- coaches up there, and you know, um, it really drives you know competition between coaches and I suppose trying out to each other. And competition is a big thing, and uh, to me that. Um, just drives the standards of, of, of coaching and uh, more, I, I think boys even players now have a, a level of expectation around what's expected in coaching and, and setups and you know you need to have that, that minimum level of of things in place I would argue to to make it an enticing pro- prospect for, for a club player if you want to go and do something you know I think the days are gone of um, there obviously are boys who are, who are there because it's their club and they want to just commit to it. But I think any good young athlete who wants to push on or a club who wants to push on will have a minimum expect level of, of what's in place around maybe if it's strength conditioning or video analysis or, you know, um, even a forwards coach or a defensive coach, that type of thing, you know. And um, it's hard to come by. It's hard to bring the whole package and, you know, the... The things around all that it can cost as well, you know, because you're dealing with professionals, I suppose. Do you, I was the say with um, I suppose 2002, right? Armagh won the All Ireland, but that time before, I suppose it was Armagh that stepped on, I suppose, the domination from the, the north. You had Armagh coming strong, you had Drone coming strong. You had that rivalry there between the two counties for the few years. What age were you that time, Aidan, or how closely did you follow? Were you football mad all along up? Yeah, no, we had a football house. Like, um, actually, I was only 10, as as only 10 in 2002. Um, I was at the game, yeah. I, was in, I, I remember being on my dad's shoulders at the hill. Like, it wasn't, must have been the only ticket we could get. But, um. Yeah, I followed it. I wasn't actually going to go to the game because I was I was a soccer man. Like I was always soccer when I was you. younger. Were you good enough to go across the water? A fella told me that today. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Obviously not because I didn't get there. But uh, I got a few trials across the water and stuff. And actually, the year I went to Arma, I played a pretty much a full season in the Irish League uh, for the Gans Swifts. But um, what position were you? On? I was centre back. Centre back. You got all mm. the boys, all the boys with Darren Sullivan, who was a good soccer player, Gooch had good skills. They all used to say I was shocking and terrible, but I reckon I would have done <laughs> centre half. You enjoyed it. Were, were you? Was that say at that at that time when you were playing that? Had you got a, a call, you would have gone. Oh yeah, no, that was my that was my aspiration as a young. There's no point in lying. Like I, I, I wanted to be a professional footballer like that's what I wanted to be and that's what everything was geared around and all my decisions when I was a, a youngster was around football and do you know what it meant that much to me I probably put a lot of pressure on myself I remember you know you're a different person when you're 18 17 18 and like I'm a completely different person now you know I wish I had the mindset that I have now in terms of and to be honest with you, I, pro- I probably got a, when I was about 14 or 15, I, I was over, I was over in Liverpool for a trial and um, I remember the, the scout picked me up and uh, I was a wee bit nervous obviously and stuff and uh, I'm not, not blaming him but it, to me it was a really bad piece of advice at the time. He, he sort of said to me, um, you know, you'll find a lot of clubs will come in for you now because you're going to a big club like Liverpool, you know, you'll find a lot of clubs that want to bring you over and stuff. And here's me yeah, sitting there, you know, maybe 14 years of age, didn't really know how to take that yeah. um, yeah. and sort of rested on myself a wee bit, expecting expecting a few calls to come in or whatever, and it didn't materialise. And two years went down the line, didn't happen. And um, That's hard, then, you know, Aiden, is it? That's hard to take that... How long were how are you talking three or four years before the dream was over? Then is it? I suppose like, um, I don't know if it was ever over or whatever. I just you know life takes a turn and Arma won Arma won the All Ireland minor in two thousand and 
was it 11 or 12? 12. And I was a year young, but I got asked to go to the trials at the very start and didn't go because I was soccer. That was my focus, like, you know. And they went and won all Ireland. And a few people said, you could have been on that team, whatever. I'm not saying I would have played or anything, but I would have been part of it because yeah. it was on the minors the following year. But um, I remember that's how I vowed to myself. Like, if I ever came calling again, I would never say no. Mm-hmm. And I didn't. And I never, you know, I haven't looked back since. I'm there 12 seasons now. And would I change it? No, I wouldn't because I made a commitment to myself. I would I would go at it as hard as I could. And I, I, I think I have. And... I've I've loved I've loved the journey. It has been lots of ups and downs, of course. Um, you know, wins and losses come, of course, and you know, you, you maybe don't get all what you deserve in football at times and whatever. But if you'd have told me at the start of my career, I, I would have won a, a first ever championship for Mahri, I probably would have said, "Yeah, I'll die a happy man, winning one." You know, and um, my father was beaten four finals and there was all that chat about Mahri being cursed and all this and you know we mightn't have won one if, if a lot of us hadn't committed to the county thing and we had four or five boys in the county at the time and we needed all that you know to drive it to our small club and and um, that was our golden age and we were determined to capitalize on it and we did and we go over the line and that was a big that was a big thing you know was that was that and, and I know you have the inter-county career and but the club thing is special isn't it Especially in a county like, like, because Cross were dominant. So to come out of that, and there's still whatever they have. I know there, there's certain clubs around the country, and they just have this. I don't know what it is. It's it's difficult to beat them. Some games you think they deserve to be beaten. Sometimes it pulls them over the line. Like was that when when you won? Is that that to go down as as one of the biggest highlights you have? Yeah, that was a special day, and I have to say it was an emotional day. Um probably didn't have you know you always look at yourself you, you know I probably didn't have the best game that day but I had a good game in 20 so you know it's it's nice when you play well and you win it was cross in the final so it was special too and, you know I think if you um if you win one you know you, you could be you could be lucky you know you can be people can say you were lucky you know you just went and you just, you know you get a bit of luck that year and get a run and you want it Do you know but we were a good team we are a very good team when we won too, like, you know, and we were there thereabouts all them time. So, you know, that, that, that means a lot to us and to, to the community. We're, we're a very small um, place and um, it'll obviously go down in history because it's the first time ever, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, no, it's special. Obviously, the county's different, you know. It's different. It's very special to being able to get the opportunity to, to pull on Norma jersey and represent the whole county and that's important to me as well and when I'm there I'm there and when I'm not I'm with the club and that's how I sort of frame it you know yeah the rivalries in in Ulster are it's huge like you were telling me there just before we came on air you went to school at Nile Mall and you're on the border there with Throne so rivalries in Ulster traditionally Aiden are huge aren't they yeah, and you know what? There was a long time where we weren't in that conversation, I suppose. We're only really joining that conversation the last three or four years, you would argue, and being competitive. Now we had a good win. We we beat Tyrone in 17, you know, which was a massive game because you know, no one expected us to do anything. But that was different because, you know, we weren't in the conversation, you know, and we weren't, you know, we weren't on a par with them or level with them, you know what I mean? And to me, we've probably earned that right over the last two or three years. You know, we're yes, we were relegated this year, I suppose, but um, you know, we were we were a kick of a ball with, a, with in all them games. Um, you can get into the nitty gritty and the nuance of why we didn't go over the line in some of the games and and stuff like that. But um, that's probably between between the group. But um, yeah, no, there's a lot of rivalries, a lot of tough games. Like, you have to get the body right for an Ulster, Ulster Championship and the condensed season, you know. I liked it, to be honest with you. I, I Maybe there's a week or two where you, you could have took <laughs> needed a bit of time to get the body right, but you don't, and everyone else is in the same boat, I suppose. So I like the hot and heaviness of it, you know. How would you find, like, I'd always, and people look at it differently, how would you look at 
say the Munster Championship or the Leinster Championship and you're obviously going to meet somewhere along the line say with the group stages that are coming through Leinster sorry Munster anyway is a way easier route in terms of the championship to get through it whatever it is than an Ulster Championship so if you're in a preliminary above an Ulster you have four tough matches why tough matches if you're to go all the way like they're always I always thought for us back in the day that we were undercooked that the quarter final, once we got to the quarter final, it was the most dangerous game of the year because we didn't know where we were because Munster wasn't. Uh, do you come out of the north and you know well where you're at? Do you, how, how would you view the other provincial championships compared to the Ulster Championship? I think you, you, there's no point. You know, you have to be honest with yourself, it's definitely a, an easier route to plan for. You know, it's... You know, we can't go back late, like, you know, because you're definitely undercooked and you're out in your ass, like, you know. So, you know, Kerry went back late and they're looking good. They're looking like they're, you know, they're priming themselves ready for, for late in the summer, which is late July at this stage. So, um, you know, it's obviously, it helps them. There's no there's no two ways about it, like. And um, Ulster, you have to be a, that little bit tighter, that little bit sharper earlier in the season. And... It's just about trying to kick that can down the road to keep that sharpness as far into the season as you can, I suppose. And especially for younger players, I find like, you know, maybe went out a wee bit of form mid-season or maybe in the middle of the Ulster Championship, went out of a wee bit of form and maybe struggled to deal with it from a, maybe a confidence point of view and stuff like that. But... um. That's, you know, Tomas, like that's the ups and downs of a season. Your energy sometimes lulls sometimes into a weekend, but you just have to frame it a different way. And, you know, when you're when you're long enough at it, you realise, look, that you just have to accept that's the ins and outs of a season. Like your energy is a wee bit lower at times and things build up on you and maybe be outside or or all the training or whatever. But you just have to say this will pass. Like you, you, you're, you're fine, you're good just maybe saying to yourself, I just need to take a darn a notch two or three days before the match and next year you're primed for the weekend, you know. And uh, I follow a lot on, on Ogyara. I listen to a lot of him. I really like him. Um, he talks He talks a lot about, towards the end of his career anyway, about simmering, you know, simmering at 80%. And I sort of trialed that a bit, you know what, in terms of like, you know, a bit more of a cruise control during the week and uh, I know Driscoll's talked about that he talked about that in his book as well where he was just you know there's no point um, training like Tarzan during the week and going out at the weekend and, and not not playing to, to your potential so that probably worked for me a wee bit this year and a lot of the older boys are, are, are learning that as well about the body look at Andrew Mernon you know riddled with injuries his, his whole career and had a phenomenal season for us you know, because he's a wee bit longer in the tooth and, and knows how to manage himself. And we've got good coaches around him who who have managed him as well. But I think the key is about the player, like, you know. And I think if it, for now, the, the over 30s, the over 30 squad, it's if in doubt you don't train. It used to be my 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 one would have been if in doubt you just train, like, you're fine going ahead. Like, yeah. But um, you have to mind yourself a wee bit. You know, we need everybody out. And in years gone by, What's killed us is not having everybody available a full a full deck like say outside physically, <clears throat> and I I found it interesting like you were physical and you were the mental side of it mentally over the years do you think build up to matches has been more difficult or easier? I think mentally is very different for everybody. There's boys who are pretty chilled out, don't give much thought to the game, um maybe until game day or day before in terms of you know getting them in terms of an arousal level of going to war or such but um i think we're quite well coached in how to prep for training or prep for a good training session or a good uh, weekend where we're not overloading ourselves with information and it's just about two or three wee things that we can you know go after that position on and, and, you know, really hone in on that rather than doing seven or eight things um, 
okay try and do two or three things at a really top top level and we talk a lot about in the group about our about our nine out of tens like what's our nine out of tens and that's what you have to bring so i think we're we do a good job with giving players a focus and discouraging them from discouraging us from from the noise and and all the build up and stuff um i'd say some people are better not than others and um but it's all learning like it's all you know you do you do one thing one week and you, you try it again or you know you'll, i'll take that wee bit out and i'll put this wee bit in and see what makes you feel good for the game day like would you you mentioned O'Gar and you mentioned O'Driscoll there would you do a lot of reading or researching in, in the background yeah i'm a reader like i like i'm fascinated by sport i'm actually reading i'm rereading an old book there um I'm, um, I like to revisit older books because I'd have a lot of things marked in them. So um, unless a book comes out that I'm really fascinated by, I'll, I'll, enough my wife doesn't want me to buy any more books, to be honest with you. <laughs> so I'll knock boxes them up there. But yeah, no, I enjoy sport. I enjoy, enjoy learning from, it might be books, maybe podcasts or audio books as well. But um, there's four or five people that I would follow quite religiously whether it be online or their books that they write and um, a great deal of trust in their content and sort of experiment with what they're advising, I suppose. And that's how I go. And that to me, that's a lifestyle of performance that I enjoy. And um, hopefully the, um, I can keep going for an hour. while. That's sort of where my mind is at the moment. I can take a wee bit of downtime now and have that bit of time to read and reflect and, um, you know, prepare again for for another season I suppose yeah, sure you're fucking you couldn't you're flying um, uh, I thought you had a really huge season talk about Geezer the, like and people say he's a serious guy and you, he comes across as a serious guy I played with him one obviously we came across each other a lot on the field um, my brother Dara would know him very well and any time we meet up we always have I think he's socially good crack and good fun and we always have a laugh when we meet up you'd have you'd know him a long long time now you obviously have great time for him uh, yeah um geezer's you know, like geezer's a man who would who pushes you and pokes you and probes you and a big one of his big things is about challenge like about challenging to be better and he does do that and he does he, he, you know i'm thankful for that and um he's there's there's many things that make up a leader and i think he he's all of them and more um he's the man who steers the ship he's the man who has the vision in his head of what way he wants to play and if it's not and if we're not getting him he'll clarify it and he'll chat through it and he'll encourage and cajole and um yeah there's a there's a there's a perception and there's reality um with geezer and he would say this himself he doesn't really give a shit um what the perception is because there's times maybe we've said to him you know people are sins and you know don't really give a shit about it like you know and um sort of that adds to the the myth of it all i suppose but um no, um, from the day you you walked into our uh, my life and the life of a lot of our players, you know, we became better people. And um, one of his big things that he always said to us coming into the group that he wanted to create a want to get us back to the top tier and and create a create a group that we can be proud of and create a group that tries to make the man beside him look look better than look better than he is and that's his whole philosophy of coaching and building a team and do we fall short of that of course um you're in a you're in a team environment an elite environment you would argue that there's a lot of egos involved a lot of boys want to play and there's only 15 spots and stuff like that and it's trying to more you know we're we're really far down the line with that sort of culture and um, I think it would be remiss of me to say, like, you know, there's a lot of chat online and geezers. Um, there's a lot of people have a comment on geezer and they don't know him. And 
um a lot of it to me is unfair and people before the right should really question these perceptions of of on these comments and and have an own opinion you know social media is a real echo chamber of you know a lot of chat there's obviously there's no point in um not addressing it i suppose about about us not being attacking enough and that type of thing and i think that's unfair and um, if you had a came to our session two, three nights before the Galway game or the Monaghan game, probably the word you would have heard Geezer say the most is forward, go forward, kick the ball, why am I not kicking it? Or hammering rain for not taking a shot or hammering me for not taking a pass out of defence or um, hammering Rory for turning back out uh, instead of, you know, passing the ball forward to a Jolly Rogue and run of people. So there's a lot of responsibility in us as players to to take that as well and I think a lot of it's unfair so um I think that's important for me to to say but um no he's a real top top look and um, a lot of time for him and him and I have have probably grown quite close over the last 10 years that he's been there and I think he has always on my number one in his life and you can ask his wife that because <laughs> Um, she was in with us this year and she just couldn't get over you know the whole setup and stuff that's our first time in Maura and uh, she was great as well she's a good Kerry woman um, it sounds like you, you, you'd you want him back like he is the longest serving Intercounty and I, I, I have very often players and managers everybody involved with a squad in people don't realise the time and from my day even to now it's just all consuming like tactically everything the amount of time you just live it and everything as a result for you whether it's work but and people can argue it whether it's work or home life everything suffers as a result like do you think he'll, he'll drive at it again next year i'm not sure to be honest with you um but from my point of view um you know i've no problem in, in saying that I'd want Geezer back and um, I'd say a lot of the boys feel the same and um, he's always progressing us and pushing us so to me I don't see this sh- next year would be would be any different with Geezer involved he just um, doesn't accept the mediocrity and I think a lot of chat with you know calling for Geezer's heads again should be questioned because um and I, I've been that soldier in Division 3 and up and down and Division 2 up and down and, and we've built something now that to me I, I, I just want it to, to last as long as it can and, um, and you know listen, we, you know, one team wins in All-Ireland and you know that doesn't um, you know that doesn't uh, my perception of that is is, is reality. I, I I know only one team can win All Ireland, and and the chances of us winning it is, um, you know, every, a chance of any team winning it's you know less of a percentage, you know, less than ten percent. So, um, but do we want to go and go after it? Of course we do. Um, to me, my, my career won't be a successful one if I don't win a championship medal, and that's how I frame it. So it's not as if uh, our appetite will be any less, but. I think we need to be careful with, you know, maybe taking geezer out of the fold and, and um I've been part of setups where the standards can, can drop very, very quickly. So um I think that won't happen under Cairn's watch and that's why I would think that he'd be another a good man to go another year. But listen, this is for Cairn to probably make a decision on, to be honest with you, because he's taken a lot of flack and, and people forget that he's human as well and um, whilst he might be on social media to see it, he's a lot of friends who who might and, and a family that find it hard to take as well. Um, that are at all the games and probably hear a lot. So, um, there's a there's a human involved in this as well, and you know, Kieran will make a decision for himself, I'm sure. Um, but um, he's an arm man at heart, and and um, that's to me who had I want an arm man there, so. I was, uh, I'll tell you a funny one, I wasn't even going to mention it at all. I was on <clears throat> RT the last day and I got a text halfway through 
on air, like, and it was from Geezer. And he took a picture of the other two Kieran's on his couch. And the two boys had a bottle of beer. And I just told him, I says, you know, what you should do now is a three you book a flight, head off to, to wherever, head off to Belgium, head off, head off to Denmark, head off somewhere. No one knows you and just cut loose for three or four days because it is a pressure cooker like and no, no matter what as you just said like there's a, a personal thing inside of it and there's family and there's you know fellas go to work and everything um aiden if you had to call and you like i've had fellas on this this year and they've been involved in management you're on the, the field you've come across the players that are still left in championship uh, taking into account that there's two good Armand and below with, her, with us down in, in Kerry, how do you see the championship going from here to the end? Yeah, uh, I think Kerry are coming good. I know the two boys quite well. I teach in Tully Sarn, they're from Tully yeah. Sarn. Um, I actually teach, I taught Colin's um, daughter, um, Colin's the stats man in yeah. there. But um, like I would go back to what I said at the start, like that you know, the most cohesive team teams and groups win championships. Like to me, um, Kerry obviously had that um, galvanizing all Ireland last year, and they're obviously a very close group and, and know each other well. So they'll be hard stop. The Dubs are you know they've got like still a core group of boys there who are you know have plenty of medals, so they'll be hard stop. But you know, Derry are a well oiled machine too and um if they can execute their game plan they'll get they'll give Kerry all the one for me. But um listen if I was a if I was a, a batting man I'm gonna go a Dublin Kerry final um I think I think to be honest with you the dubs might have a wee bit more appetite in the final but um just on field to be honest with you and um, we didn't play the dubs this year. We had one friendly game with them down in the country but and um, some of us weren't playing, but you know, on field, um, um, I think the Dubs might have it. To be honest with you, yeah, I, I, I think it's a very hard one to call. I would have said, I think I didn't see that second half coming against Mayo. Um, I felt the Dubs would win, but I didn't. I don't know. I, I'm still kind of was it a half a Mayo capitulation, or was it the Dubs driving on? There's something in my it, was bit, it was a bit, but like Mayo were probably the most physical team we played this year in terms of intensity, and it probably suited us. That sort of chaos of a game probably suited us. Um, it was a windy night, and we were on the wrong side of the result, I suppose. But um, you know, and um, Monaghan obviously are more possession. You know, they've changed from from the from their defeat that they, they've changed their way of playing to. A more possession based slower game we found that um against us Kerry also we played them early in the league and and they were decent and had quality but we probably should have won that night it was a draw but we should have won that night because we were probably a wee bit more conditioned than them on the night um and we set up quite well that night too but um listen they've got serious see when you have the quality Kerry have and in clifford who who definitely occupies at least two men at all times. Do you know, you've just marked, you've marked power of an a job of marking Aiden all the time inside, right? Yourself or McKay would get a job of taking somebody most of the time. Who's a tough yeah. like it's a, it's not really a fair question in a way, like, but do you enjoy that? Do you enjoy getting the job knowing fucking I'm on the one of the main men here again tonight? Or is it something you relish? Who's the hardest you come across? Or is it a case all the top teams have have Great inside men. Yeah, no, every everybody presents a different challenge, and you know what? <laughs> um, I would after every game, I'd write down what oh, we nuances that they've maybe done, like you know, um, whether it be Michael Murphy, you know he's gone now, or McCurry, or uh, only. <laughs> I was um, unfortunate enough to get Clifford in the league game last year. He came on up against us. I remember Ethan slipped. He scored the goal. And there's a there's a f bloody famous photo online where he sends me to the shop. I was diving for the block and he just turned back inside. So 
and there's one time up the line I went I thought I could you know nearly go through and it was in the first ball like but um and he he just turned me like he was so so quick with his hips you know so he was he was frightening there that night I have to say um, like Rian O'Neill is is would obviously be as strong as him like but for a fella that has just the twist and the turn and the and the uh, yeah I don't know this and he's very he's very good he's very good um at really the the dummy's really good because he exaggerates with his eyes you know there's plenty of boys who do good dummies because they have a big hand or uh, and a good stroke with their back leg or whatever but he's looking at the goals so that's why he committed to that block do you know because he's looking at the goals and i'm going he's kicking this there's no doubt he's kicking this in my head in that wee split second and i'm going i'm committing to this and he just he just pulled it back because he obviously knew he was pulling it back all along but it was the eyes that I'm going, you know, shit, he, he, he was looking at the goals and still pulled it back. <laughs> so his level of skill, you know, is just a skill level that's different, you know what I mean? Well, the boy, I, just a small thing, because Mark, our fella, uh, I don't know who it was, he was marking one day and he got sold for an awful, reckless dummy. Would the boys pull the piss? We pull the piss out of Mark, like, if, if he got caught for a fucking thing. Would the boys have a laugh over that now, no? No, oh, ah, yeah, no, there would be a wee bit of poking at that now, to be fair, but um, some ways w- would take it better than others. I'd be the first to let someone know about about something, so I'll have to take it. But uh, um, the likes of McKay and all wouldn't be too, wouldn't shine too well in that one. Like McKay would get very, McKay would get very low very quick with some boys. Like you know, well, will you go to the matches, Aidan, or will you? Are you kind of guy who switch switches off after it's over, or will you go up enjoy it? Will you enjoy the weekend? What do you do? Um, I usually do, but I'm not sure. I'll see, see closer to the time. I'm, I'll make a call closer to the time. Rather, I want to go down. A lot. I probably not go to the semi finals. I'll watch them somewhere. But I usually go down to the final, and um, with a few of the boys and have a look. Um, but I see how I feel. Might go down. The time. Might go down for one of Stars Burgers for the semi final. Yeah, mate. Yeah, I'll see. I'll see. I haven't been chatting him. I think he's in New York or something there at the minute, is he? He's flying high. Wherever he is, he's having a laugh. I can tell you that. Anyway, uh, yeah. listen, Aidan, I'm going to leave you at that. It was a brilliant episode. Thanks a million for being with us. Uh, thanks to Airgrid for sponsoring Ireland's, um, the leading transition of Ireland's electricity grid to low carbon future. We thank them. Uh, Aidan, I hope, I hope we see you again next year. Always enjoy watching you. Always enjoying the physicality and the outside of the boots. Keep them coming by. They're, they're a pleasure to watch. So all the best for the club year ahead as well, Aidan. And thanks a million for being with us. All right. Thanks again to our sponsor, Airgrid. Proud supporters of the Airgrid Under-20 All-Ireland Football Championship and leaders in Ireland's pursuit of a cleaner energy future. Don't forget to follow, subscribe and review. Gormila Mahagar.